Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, CA, for inviting uh, me to this session and uh, give opportunity to present our views on the solar as well as uh, energy management system and how it can benefit industries in monitoring, controlling, and reducing the energy consumption year on year, uh, day after day. Uh, Sunshot Technologies is uh, India's one of the largest uh, ETC and solar developer in the on-site space. Uh, though we have seen big bikes of, deep of you know, uh, solar power being installed in India, uh, Sunshot has been focused right from the day one on putting up the solar on the rooftop of the industries or on the ground within the premise, thereby reducing the dependability on the government and the government policies and using the electricity where the source is and the sink as well. So uh, we are uh, about uh, 175 sites uh, installed, uh, more than 40 megawatt of the solar has been installed across these sites and uh, that has helped generate more than 6 crores of unit uh, on year on year basis. Uh, that's where it's generated and consumed at the, at the same premise. The environmental benefit of solar are immense. Uh, I, was, I was talking to uh, sir about uh, what is the carbon footprint of the solar plant? Because when we, we talk about the renewable energy, uh, our, our, the first thing comes in our mind that if it is a renewable source, obviously to produce the equipment that are required to produce the renewable energy itself has its own carbon footprint. For example, when we have a wind turbine, we see a hub mast and then you know the blades, which and then there is a rotor and turbine which generates the electricity from the wind. But when we produce those equipment, there is an immense amount of electricity that you know, get consumed, the material that get consumed uh, to, to make that product. And, and each product that we use in our day-to-day -day life, it has a carbon footprint. So uh, I'm happy to note that uh, among all the renewable sources, uh, solar is the most efficient one. Uh, just to give you uh, numbers, uh, for one megawatt of a capacity of a solar plant, the heart of the solar plant is solar modules. That's where we see everywhere the photos, you know, whenever we search, we see a solar panel. So that's, that's, that's the equipment that produces the electricity from the photons, the solar rays. So for one megawatt of a capacity that the uh, solar panels to be produced, the electricity requirement, depending on the technology, varies from about 15 lakhs to 20 lakh units for one megawatt hour of uh, panels to be produced. And when we put this plant at an premise, uh, depending on the location, because solar radiation doesn't remain same across the location, uh, the, the solar can become carbon neutral by itself within 12 to 18 months. So that means uh, a megawatt hour of, uh, a one megawatt capacity of solar plant has a potential to generate about 15 lakh units annually. So the plant can pay its own electricity or the carbon footprint it has consumed while the product will manufacture and, and become carbon neutral within one, one and a half year. And post that, typically the solar modules are designed uh, for a life of 25 years, operating life of 25 years. They can go beyond that. However, they can work and give the electricity for 25 years. And therefore, we can safely assume that on the conservative side, 23 and a half years, it is going to be a pure, pure renewable energy. So, uh, there are various models that have been developed in India, uh, particularly in the on-site solar space, uh, been driven by various developers. So, there is a one typical model that has been adopted by the industries widely is, is an OPEX model or a good model, uh, which, you know, is not different from what we see in a road construction. And we have been seeing the toll roads and the being built on the good model. So here uh, what happens is that there are various developers who have uh, raised the funds and have a particular uh, uh, you know, requirement of investing into the rooftop assets where the power purchase agreement is signed with the off-taker. So the example is we have uh, uh, did with uh, some of the clients in, 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 in Pune where the investor would invest into the solar plant, sign a 20 years power purchase agreement and the power produced from the solar energy will be sold as, as low as 4 rupees to 4 rupees 50 pesa per unit. So uh, in, in Maharashtra we all know that the electricity cost is anywhere about 8 to 9 rupees per unit in a daytime, whereas the power that produced from the solar at zero upfront investment will come at 4 rupees. So there is a 
saving right on the day one when the plant you know goes in the in the, in the operation. So uh, Sechot has worked and have about our fifty percent asset book is from the uh, uh, on the OPEX model where we invest into these projects and uh, offer the electricity at very low tariffs. Uh, of course, the second is the conventional model where the industries themselves invest into the into the assets. So we have uh, some of the market lands like Anderson or the Rito, uh, Swiss company based out of having bases in, in Maharashtra, near Pune, Aronabad, where uh, two megawatt of a plant has been put up. I'm fortunate to have a representative here from uh, Rito, uh, where we have recently commissioned two megawatt of a plant, uh, which has the potential to generate about uh, 20, 30 lakh units. And, and with that, on, on the capex, typically for every CFO, the financial goes and the first thing comes to mind that if we decide to invest into solar plant, what is going to be our return on the capital or the payback? So typically in the state of Maharashtra, the payback is about three years. So effectively today, solar would compete with any other capital allocation project that the financial team would be evaluating. And I'm sure that will come at the top because the, the return on the capital employed is going to be anywhere from 30 to 35 percent. So three years you have a payback, whereas the solar can generate about 25 years. So there's going to be a significant cost saving that each uh, industry can incur over its life of a plant. Why we have been involved in the solar plant? Uh, the solar we looked at as a source. You know, it, it generates the energy required for our factories, for our industries, for commercial places like hotels where we are as a connected plant session. So. Uh, what is the source? And since we have been involved in source, uh, uh, the first thing we always kept in mind is that if we cannot measure what we are generating, how much we are generating, whether it's good, it's efficient, again the radiation we are having, we cannot manage the plant. So uh, we, we developed our in-house SCADA system for the solar plant, so uh, where we have been able to measure the every parameter of electricity that comes from the solar plant and see how the generation is being uh, happening over a period of time and that has given us an insight into optimizing a solar plant design going forward where we have been able to do a better plant design to have a maximum generation of the same place uh, as compared to you know the other uh, technologies or the options that are available so uh, so when we extend this, this logic from the source to sink, sink is all the types of loads that we have in the factory. And uh, typically when we were uh, to go and pitch client that look, I mean, we want to put up an X capacity. So the capacity estimation is heavily, heavily driven by what is the sink and what the consumption pattern the factories have. And it was quite surprised to find that a lot of factories, uh, this would not be general statement, but a lot of factories do not have a very minute data of their electricity consumption. The base would then aggregate consumption that happens through the electricity bill, which is anyway the discount will be sending us. But beyond that, if I have to divide that consumption maybe on the daily basis, on the hourly basis, on the 15 minute slot basis, on 5 minute slot basis, machine wise, division wise, that data is mostly unavailable. And that's the first thing that came in mind that if you don't have that data, we surely cannot manage our sinks. And therefore, energy management is the second thing. If you don't know where we are consuming, how much we are consuming, we are consuming in the right manner or not. Uh, management is the second problem, right? it's the second stage. Uh, so we need to first know how much we are consuming. And that is how uh, we started working and extending our, our startup system to, to get into an energy management platform, wherein uh, the, the idea was to get all the sinks all the types of the sinks. I mean, I'm, I'm calling sink as a, as, a, as a load because the sources also could be of a variety type. We have like solar plant, diesel generator, and discount power. These are the three sources we have as of now on our sites, on our, on our uh, factories. And there are variety of the sinks, various types of loads that would be available. So uh, when we interacted with our clients, uh, we realized that cost saving has always been the paramount and most important aspect which drives the decision making in the factories. So the process improvement has always been aimed at bringing down the cost uh, and that has been the priority. Uh, various activities been or tasks been taken, initiatives been taken to achieve that. However, the recent, uh, some of the improvements uh, on the hardware, uh, software and as well as the connectivity point has happened has enabled us to 
go reach out to you know the last sink that would be available in the factory so i just want to correlate that with you know uh, like we see uh, olympians or the athletes who are you know compete at the world stage uh, i mean maybe 10 years back as well any one who participate in the olympic would have a, a team of nutritionist the trainers uh, you know who would guide them how to perform and therefore we their every biological parameter would be measured that the amount of you know the calories they intake from the type of the food they have it the hours of sleep that they do and this help to optimize their performance when they go and compete those technologies that were used by them now being have made available through you know smart hardware like smart meters now the meters have become so cheap and we can go and put on every small device or the consumption point that we have in factory and internet connectivity we, we didn't have you know 4G just let let alone 4G we didn't have a good internet connectivity just 5 years back uh, the smartphones were there for about a decade back so the uh connectivity innovation of the technology that has happened and the cloud data management uh, which has enabled us to uh, to to you know refrog the software that is all, was already available to ensure that we can monitor every device in the factory and therefore creating the digital clones of the factories that we have as of now a large factory doesn't have digital clone that means i do not have the every parameter details on my fingertips if simply we ask that what is the consumption yesterday maybe uh, a factory manager or the plant head has to make five phone calls and maybe couple of hours away to get that data because that is not available and if that is not the lead time to just get the data to do the analysis and you know take the initiative to optimize is going to be a, a bit of a, a long range so uh, we looked at that you know the the, the uh, platform can you know be developed to overcome the challenges that we have seen like lack of visibility of the energy the the, the energy map of the factory is not available uh, simply some of the clients we see that just to have the control over the maximum or the contract demand that the factory has can only be realized that it has been crossed after the bill comes at the end of the month so it is mostly going to be you know a post facto analysis and the assessments than taking the action as when when the problems are occurring so sunshot extended our uh, energy management system to you know uh, sunshot analytics which now can help us monitor the entire landscape in the factory so typically we have types of the sources like most of the factories are today or tomorrow going to adopt and have a multi sources of the energy on the side so it would be as of conventionally has been the discom and the dg set very soon we are going to have the uh energy storages like the battery cost is going to go down uh, uh within within a year or two we anticipate that the energy storage will start competing with the diesel generator today the cost of the electricity from the dg set is about 80 to 20 rupees a unit and at that price point uh, the electricity from the storage is become absolutely competitive and, and within a couple of years the cost from the stored electricity will be cheaper than the cost of you know generating from the diesel generator and thus we can do away with you know the polluted uh, one of the polluted uh, on, on campus and those batteries can be uh, charged using the solar uh, power that can be generated on the roof so we are going to have the uh, typically battery energy uh, solar plants grid and diesel generator as a four sources of the energy at the site we typically would have various sinks at the site changing from the type of the manufacturing activity do we do and the type of machines we bring in and therefore it becomes extremely important to monitor both sources and sinks and various parameters which govern them to bring the efficiency in the way we consume them and and and, and thus incur the savings on ongoing basis i'm just going to take you through one of the case studies where we have installed the energy management system and uh, it's a very leading uh, food processing uh, company near by Pune. Uh, before we installed it, I mean, they, they didn't have an, any uh, electrical map or the energy map of the factory. They did not have where, how much the electricity get consumed other than their electricity bill, which comes at a very aggregate level. So the first thing was to look at, you know, which are the various uh, production lines that they have and how the energy gets consumed. So this is the first thing that we, you know most of the industries and the plants need to arrive at, and and this comes mostly either in some places if it is happening it happens on the manual basis where the data is being collected manually through the electricity meters and then 
uh, pulled it through the like Excel sheet and then arrived at you know uh, the analysis. We looked at that. Uh, and, and when we simply looked at, the, the, the client himself came back and said, look, I mean, uh, we see that at some of our chillers, the, the energy consumption is higher than the, you know, typically it should be. So, specific energy is the first thing that can be monitored when we have the sources and same. So, example to give that, if I have four units to be consumed for every one unit of a product that happens on the production line, and if that is what has been a designated or designed specific consumption, uh, software can monitor that how electricity consumption happening at that specific energy consumption point. Every time if there is a 5% variation allowed, you can set that alarm and look and, and say that look if any time your specific energy consumption is varying beyond 5%, so and so person has to get the alarm. So as person has to get the notification. And actionable inputs can be drilled down to the level that this machine could be a possible cause of having higher energy consumption as compared to you know what it should be based on the historical data. So why I said cloud uh, uh, you know processing and the management is because uh, recently we have keep hearing about the machine learning and, and you know AI. I mean machine learning AI has been there for last two, two to three decades. It's not that the first thing that has happened. Only the computing powers have come within the commercial range to make that available for you know any commoner. And thus those algorithms, if applied uh, to what the data we generate, the machine itself will be able to predict and tell us that look, I mean chiller today is consuming more power than it has been consuming over the last uh, average trend of you know, six months. And these actionable inputs can be provided, which again can be you know uh, decided by the factories that has to go to the maintenance manager or the line manager or the or the, you know the, the plant head, depending on who is more interested in seeing that data. So we saw that uh, you know the the temperature uh, ambient temperature was higher at the cooling point of one of the uh, chiller and the resizing uh, was was required. So the client worked out and said, look, I mean, we have a three years payback for this particular initiative, and uh, but after payback, given the life of the uh, cooling tower, we are going to have enormous savings. So this was just a uh, one one uh, case that came up after installing the uh, energy analytics platform and seeing that how the benefits can come up. And as we go forward, we'll have more and more such a cases coming up where it will be driven by the data. And, and the client will be able to benefit from it. I'll just touch upon the three points among the various uh, benefits that would be there by any, any software based uh, analysis. The first is that it reduces and cut off the entire manual intervention that is there in measuring the data and analyzing it. It is right available on the fingertips whenever a concerned person wants to look at it and take a decision. Second is that not everybody wants to look at the same data. So maybe a plant head would like to look at what is the specific energy consumption of the plant, but maybe a CEO or a CFO would like to have comparison of all five manufacturing units in India, that how they are performing with each other, provided it's the typical same category of the product that we manufacture. So the specific energy consumption of the factories also can be compared at the CEO level. So software can allow us to have a various insights customized in the dashboard uh, for the particular person, which you know can be of interest to have. Uh, and as I said, uh, because it is it is driven by uh, the historical trend and and the analytics, actionable inputs can be generated to the specific person to go and look at whether the machine is performing properly or particular production to, uh, line is performing properly. Or for that matter, as simple as we have seen, the power factor is our challenge in most of the plants having a higher energy load, and you know we keep changing that, managing it. But real time monitoring of PF never happens. It may be happening once in hourly basis if it is manually taken, but not beyond that. And even if we see that the PF is dropping uh, at a factory level, we will not be able to figure out because of which machine that is happening. With software that can be possible to locate that particular machine, that particular production line, which is affecting the PF, because ultimately uh, the MSCD sale is contemplating now that in the, instead of charging on the KWHR, they are going to move on to KVR. So ultimately, uh, what are the benefits of the penalties that the PF gives now in the bill will be taken out and effectively it all will be KVR basis. So, so managing the reactive and active power will become extremely important at the plant level going forward as the regulations are going to change and take place. 
So these are some of just the snapshot of the dashboards where we can we can see on the real time basis what is the energy consumption on a daily basis, uh, consumption of one particular machine. Uh, we can compare the trends across the machines that how they are performing. And then on the source side, I mean, there, there are like various sources would be there. So how the sources uh, are uh, contributing to the total uh, uh, demand that is there at the factory. Thank you very much.